you know, part of this despair that many of us go through is that we look at human behavior, we look at what civilization has done on Earth, and we think that maybe humans are just bad. Maybe we're, we're nature's mistake. We, 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 we forgot something important and we're destroying the Earth because of that. Some radical writers say that. Derek Jensen, um, John Zerzan, you know, they say agriculture was a big mistake. Or, or even symbolic culture, language, was a big mistake. It began to separate us and we became more and more separate from nature and, and now we've almost destroyed it. And we should go back to being hunter-gatherers. <coughs> that no other, no other being in nature thinks it can grow forever. Exponential growth, that doesn't happen in nature. But actually it does happen in nature. Um, if you introduce bacteria into a medium where there are no <laughs> bacteria yet, but there's food, they will grow exponentially for a while until the population levels off. Might peak a little bit and then dip and then level off. Um, but there is a growth phase. Same with an immature ecosystem. Same with an immature person. There's a phase where you grow and you are entitled. You feel entitled to receive from your parent. And that's what your love relationship is. It's one of receiving. And you grow. And that's humanity's relationship with Earth up until now. Where we've pretty much taken nature's gifts for granted. But then at some point, growth ends. The ecosystem reaches maturity. The child reaches adulthood. And as growth ends, two things happen. Uh, the first is there's some kind of ordeal that marks this transition. Ancient cultures understood this, and so they created coming-of-age ordeals for children to mark the passage into adulthood. And these rituals involved your world falling apart, either through psychedelic plants or physical pain or isolation. Uh, Everything that you thought was so solid and secure and permanent, your child's world fell apart. You didn't know who you were anymore. Your identity fell apart. And then you, you gained a larger identity, an understanding of your place in the tribe. Therefore, you were an adult. And you joined the tribe for real. That's what is happening now to humanity. We're going through a coming of age ordeal that feels like the world is falling apart that is changing our identity in relationship to nature, no longer separate from nature, and then we're joining the tribe of all life on Earth. The other thing that happens at this stage of life is that you fall in love. And this love relationship is different from the relationship of a child to a parent, because you no longer just want to receive. You also want to give. You want to, even as a teenager, you want to give something to your sweetie, you know? And, and, and then you want to co-create. And that's what humanity now is moving into. It started again in the 60s, when the environmental movement was born into mass consciousness, and people wanted to protect Earth and give back to Earth. And it happened when the astronauts beamed down those photographs of the planet which was the first time that most people saw Earth without borders drawn on it. People had never seen that before, most people. Today, it's almost a cliche image, planet Earth. But even today, it arouses some kind of wonder and reverence. But when it first came down, it was a revelation to people. The astronauts felt it. They all fell in love, too. They said, they said, I was up there and I didn't see any borders on Earth and I felt an overwhelming desire to protect this planet. And I, I felt love for every person on the planet. Everything precious to me. I could, I could cover the Earth with my thumb and I realized that everything precious to me was on that little dot all of literature, all of music, everybody I loved, all of history, 
all of human striving was on this little fragile dot. And so we fell in love with Earth. And today, everybody, on some level, wants to devote their gifts in service of other beings and in service of the Earth. For the connected self, it's not true that we're in competition and that more for you is necessarily less for me. More for you is more for me, too. And those are the things that we're attracted to now. No longer attracted to the conquest of nature. Unfortunately, our institutions haven't caught up with this shift.